I'm Janina Gavankar, and you are watching In Studio with The Hollywood Reporter. Okay, so let's start with The Way Back, okay. which is releasing in theaters today. <sighs> wow. Okay. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> Has it been a while? Have you been waiting for the, for the theatrical yeah. release? Yeah. Um, we started shooting this in October of 2018, and uh, we did reshoots in the middle of this last year. And uh, who we'll just see how what the world thinks. <laughs> well, this is a, a very impressive movie. It's about loss. It's about grief. It's about redemption. It's about basketball. <laughs> it's about so yeah. many things. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the movie? The the overall message of the movie. I think it's a, it's a really important movie. If we did everything that we were supposed to, um, and you know, it, it's. I gotta say, this whole experience has felt more like doing an indie movie than a studio movie ever could. Mm, really? And yeah, I mean, I've done a ton of indie yeah. projects, and I did not think it was gonna feel the way that it did. It was a really intimate experience, and you know that just chalk that up to Gavin. Most of you, most of your scenes are with Ben Affleck. You play exes. Mm -hmm. um, I what I noticed first and foremost was. His character, Jack, um, was trying to bring your character, Angela, into his grief. He was trying to um, bring her down to his level. And if he saw that you were coming out of your grief, he was going to bring you back down. And that took... It's so interesting that you feel that way. Yeah, that's, yeah that was I, my impression of yeah, it. When I, I felt as though I was watching the man that I still love perform okayness hmm. um, and try to prove that everything was fine and I was doing great. Right. Um, and if anybody knows that that's a lie, it's, you know, the woman that knows him best. Yeah. So it's, so yeah, I mean, he's also, I think, I think when you're at your worst, you really, it's most people have a hard time accepting any health, help. Yes. Um, for their own mental health and, um, Part of that is like a feeling of unworthiness, you know, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I think all those things are also happening. So that's yeah. like the level underneath really yes. even what she is seeing. Right. Um, so I love that that is what you you felt. But, There's but a, yes, all the, of these things are true simultaneously. Right. There's a duality it, to yeah. um, when somebody is struggling with addiction, mm -hmm. um, especially alcoholism, the family dynamic can be that they're pushing you away, they're telling you that everything's great, and at the same time, they're, you know, trying to manipulate or reach out. Like, there's just so many things happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're playing these scenes with Ben, mm -hmm. and I, I noticed you have to kind of physically change, like diminish yourself in certain places, and like, you, there was just like, all of the emotions that you had to show were were extremely subtle, but I saw it in your body language. Mm -hmm. Was that something that you were thinking about at the time, or is uh, that something that yes just... Yes and no. I mean, that's just sort of training an instinct at some yeah. point. You know, if you really just commit yourself to understanding the situation and every moment that's come before it, and then you, I mean, this is like theater 101 stuff, you know? If you just go in with an action and a mm -hmm. motivation and just are hyper aware of everything that's come before, all of those things will happen naturally. If you're in a safe space with other act actors and artists who are willing to do the same thing. Right. And, and tell me about the space that you shared with Ben Affleck. Because yeah, sure. You, um, I, I read an article in The Hollywood Reporter. Oh, it's that funny. What's that, <laughs> what's it, what is that publication? That sounds, <laughs> yeah. Are they an authority in this space? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think, um, I think you might know them. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, but uh, Pia, our wonderful uh, Pia. editor, was uh, talking about talking to you about um, you and Ben being able to have discussions about not only um, what was happening in the movie you were currently at, but the movie that you were writing and directing at yeah. the same time. Yeah, um, I was prepping my short film simultaneously. Yeah. Uh, which deals with mental health and suppressing anxiety. Yeah. And um, I told Ben the whole entire thing. You uh -huh. know, I pitched him the whole story. I pitched him the tongue sequence, uh, <laughs> which is a sort of like, 
pretty intense moment. Um, yeah. We love magical realism, my, my creative partner and I. So, mm -hmm. uh, but that means that we really have to, to pitch ideas to as many people as we can, you know, to make sure that yeah. what we're actually trying to do is not lost behind the gag. Yes. You know? So, um, yeah, I, I, I pitched the tongue sequence to Ben and he yeah. just twisted up his little face like, You got the Ooh. appropriate reaction. I was like, ah, God. <laughs> God, we really got something now, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, what is it like, you know, as a first time director, first time director? Yeah, I've directed um, a bunch of sort of like other little pieces and like music videos and these kinds of things, but this is my first narrative mm -hmm. short film, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Stucco. Sure. Um, because it is going to be premiering at the South by Southwest Yeah, Festival? it's not a premiere, so we were, but we're in competition at South by. Oh, okay, yeah. great, fantastic. But we did just premiere online. Yes, at the Hollywood Reporter. Hollywood Reporter. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You can see it on the Hollywood you Reporter. Can. You can see the entire short film. Yeah, which is really cool to us. You it's know, very it's cool. really it means a lot to us to have the support of a trade. You know, I've been doing this a long time, mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing a lot of other things besides acting for a long time. But most people don't know that, and and yeah. you know, I don't feel like uh, just because a tree falls in the forest and nobody's around that it doesn't make a sound. Like, I feel all of the sounds of the trees that I've made in the past. I don't know what, I, what anal <laughs> this analogy is falling apart. But the, the point is that um, this is the first very public offering, right. um, especially from Russo and I. And to have the support that you guys have given us and, and premiered, it actually means a lot to us. Uh, so it's true, The Hollywood Reporter does write a lot about female filmmakers, especially in the festival space. Mm -hmm. And one, uh, I've, I heard recently about a report that um, they've been keeping track of female filmmakers, producers, uh, cinematographers, and finding a, um, a huge leap in uh, festival representation. But still, major feature films Incrementally, women are taking those and jobs. And sometimes and positions. Very moving slowly. backwards. Very, the data very shows slowly. it's not always a move forward. Yes, yes. Um, so, what can we do about that? How can we, well, we can, translate the festival representation into jobs? Well, the things that you're talking about the studio system, right? Yeah. And um, all of those things are just based on data. But right. if you have a data-driven top 10 list of the top 10 whoever the heck, it's immediately a hidden default mm -hmm. because that list will never change. Right. If the big studios who have the money to call the shot say, well, we're only going to work with an A-list XYZ, they're going to look at that top 10 list, which is based on everything that's come before it. It will never change. Yeah. So unless they decide that the metric that's most important is not that they're, fault, they're getting somebody from that A-list and that they're actually changing representation and that that list matters more, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna change. If you want to exist in any space, this is not just Hollywood, as a woman, mm -hmm. as a leader, you have to do it courageously and you have to just start calling shots on your own yeah. in the way that men have for a really long time. So uh, you have presented a social thriller to the world, but yeah. what would you like to be doing next? Are you diving into the horror genre? Are you wanting to go in different directions? Well, I would say that our, um, all of our projects are pretty left of center. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping um, it weird. Keeping it weird, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, but they span the gamut of um, art house horror, which works in analogy, and also just like comedy snob level snobbery, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, but we have, you know, we have our million dollar indie script that we're polishing right now, um, mm -hmm. which is the spiritual successor to Stucco. We don't feel like we need to make the feature version. We've already told the story. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, we love this genre because, you know, you can really examine the parts of ourselves that we're not proud of in right. horror. Okay, so um, I have one more project because you have many, many projects. Yeah, I mean, one you know what this is? It's like you, you have to have 15 going simultaneously. Yeah. I was literally negotiating a contract in the car on the way here for something that nobody knows about. Hopefully it won't fall apart. This is literally what it is. You just yep. have to keep doing it. 
over and over and over until one thing sticks. My last question is actually about uh, you play Allison in the morning show. I do. And we want to know more about Allison. Oh, well, okay. Well, next time you see Reese or Jen, you let them know. Or Carrie, <laughs> Carrie Aaron, this brilliant um, showrunner. Uh, yeah, you know, she's a very interesting person. Again, these are like, these are the things that I discuss with the writers and um, that just there's not enough real estate on the show for you to be able to yeah. do. Um, but yeah, Allison is not a real name. Um, <laughs> and uh, she is sort of a former pageant girl. Mm -hmm. uh, she's not like a pageant queen, but she's just sort of always found ways to win publicly. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think the way that she's risen above all of the Mitch muck is that she doesn't care. She is going to live way past the morning show. This right. is a line on her resume. And as everybody else vies for that Iron Throne, she's like, go ahead. My Instagram following is way more important right now. Because <laughs> it's going to help me get the next thing. You know? Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're all looking forward to season two. Oh, we're um, shooting it right now. so Amazing. Yeah. Um, very excited to see what happens with season two. Um, have so much fun at South by Southwest. Thank you. Are you going? Uh, no. Okay. But have so much fun at South by Southwest. Thank and you. Uh, check out The Way Back. It's in theaters now. Yeah.